when the door opens? Is that the signal when the door opens? Good morning. Welcome to our Eucharistic celebration. My name is Marion Leone, and I will be the cantor at today's Mass. Our celebrant is our pastor, Father Bob Gorski, and our deacon is Jay Cormier. The intention for today's Mass, Madeline Chanteloy. The community meal program would love to provide fruits and vegetables from your garden to our guests during the to-go bag. If you have an overabundance of fruit and vegetables and would like to share them, please bring them in next week, Saturday, August 29th, or Sunday, August 30th. There will be a box to collect them oh, near the parking lot door. This night. is a one-time donation next weekend. Thanks so much. In order to preserve the sacredness of the Holy Mass, kindly silence your cell phones and any other electronic devices. Please stand. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Good morning, everyone. Before we celebrate these sacred mysteries, let us take a few moments and call to mind our sins. You were sent to heal the contrite of heart. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. You came to call sinners. Christ, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. You plead for us at the right hand of the Father to intercede for us. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sin, and bring us all to everlasting life. Amen. Glory to God in the highest on earth. Amen. Peace to people of goodwill. We praise you. We bless you. We adore you. We glorify you. We give you thanks for your great glory. Lord God, Heavenly King, O God, Almighty Father, Lord Jesus Christ, Only Begotten Son, Lord God, Lamb of God, Son of the Father, you take away the sins of the world, have mercy on us. You take away the sins of the world, receive our prayer. You are seated at the right hand of the Father, have mercy on us. For you alone are the Holy One, you alone are the Lord, you alone are the Most High, Jesus Christ, with the Holy Spirit, in the, in the glory of God the Father. Amen. Let us pray. O God, who caused the minds of the faithful to unite in a single purpose, grant your people to love what you command, and to desire what you promise, that amid the uncertainties of this world, our hearts may be fixed on that place where true gladness is found. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God forever and ever. Amen. A reading from the book of the prophet Isaiah. Thus says the Lord to Shebna, master of the palace, I will thrust you from your office and pull you down from your station. 
On that day, I will summon my servant Eliakim, son of Hil Hilkiah. I will clothe him with your robe and gird him with your sash and give over to him your authority. He shall be a father to the inhabitants of Jerusalem and to the house of Judah. I will place the key of the house of David on Eliakim's shoulder. When he opens, no one will shut. When he shuts, no one will open. I shall fix him like a peg in a sure spot to be a place of honor for his family. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. <clears throat> Lord, your love is eternal. Do not forsake the work of your hands. Lord, your, your love, love is eternal. Do not, Do not forsake, forsake the work of your hands. I will give you thank I will give thanks to you, O Lord, with all my heart. For you have heard the words of my mouth. In the presence of the angels, I will sing your praise. I will worship at your holy temple. Lord, Lord your, your love is eternal. eternal. Do not I forsake the, the work of your hands. I will give thanks to your name because of your kindness and your truth. When I called, you answered me. You built up strength within me. Lord, Lord your, your love, love is eternal. eternal. Do not I forsake, forsake the, the work of your hands. The Lord is exalted, yet the lowly he sees, and proud he knows from afar. Your kindness, O Lord, endures forever. Forsake not the work of your hands. Lord, Lord your love is eternal. Do not forsake the work of your hands. A reading from the letter of St. Paul to the Romans. Oh, the depth of the riches and wisdom and knowledge of God. How inscrutable are his judgments and how unsearchable his ways. For who has known the mind of the Lord or who has been his counselor? Or who has given the Lord anything that he may be repaid? For from him and through him and for him all thing, are all things. To him be glory forever. Amen. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Alleluia, alleluia. Father, your blessing. You are Peter, and upon this rock I will build my church, and the gates of the netherworld shall not prevail against it. Alleluia, alleluia. Lord be with you. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Matthew. Jesus went into the region of Caesarea Philippi and he asked his disciples, who do people say that the Son of Man is? They replied, some say John the Baptist, others Elijah, still others Jeremiah or one of the prophets. He said to them, but who do you say that I am? Simon Peter said in reply, You are the Christ, the Son of the living God. Jesus said to him in reply, Blessed are you, Simon, son of Jonah, for flesh and blood has not revealed this to you, but my heavenly Father. And so I say to you, you are Peter, and upon this rock I will build my church, and the gates of the netherworld shall not prevail against it. 
I will give you the keys to the kingdom of heaven. Whatever you bind on earth shall be bound in heaven, and whatever you loose on earth shall be loosed in heaven. Then he strictly ordered his disciples to tell no one that he was the Christ. The Gospel of the Lord. She's a young mom with two little children, a six-year-old and a four-year-old. When the alarm clock jolts her awake early every morning, she lies in bed for a few seconds, stares at the ceiling, thinks about all the things she has to do that day. Sometimes she laments the fact that she doesn't have time for things like prayer and meditation. This young mom wishes she, she lived a more and I use the word in quotations, religious life. She greatly admired Mother Teresa and read a great deal about her and by her. And she says to herself sadly, God, I could never be like her. But that's the problem. She's not meant to be Mother Teresa. She's meant to be herself. She's meant to experience the presence of God in her life and the lives of the people with whom she lives and works. Sometimes that means doing big things with love, like raising her children. And sometimes it means doing smaller things with love, like wearing a hot, uncomfortable face mask. In his book, My Life with the Saints, Father James Martin writes about this young mom, and moms and dads like her. God's invitation to live out our unique vocations is part of what makes the world so rich. Problems arise when we have to be someone else to be holy. We try to use someone else's map to heaven when God has already planted in our soul all the directions we need. When admirers used to visit Calcutta to visit Mother Teresa and to see her work, she would tell them, find your own Calcutta. The reality is that Christ calls us to be his disciples exactly where we are. He asks us to take up our crosses in the joys and sorrows that we experience every day in our homes, in our schools, in our parishes, in our communities. Whether we're the mother of twins or the mother of a religious community, whether we pray in a corner of our laundry room or in a great abbey church, whether we struggle to find God in our marriages and families or in lives of vowed charity and poverty, we are called by Christ to follow in his footsteps wherever our footsteps lead us. The question that Jesus poses to Peter and his friends in today's gospel is posed to all of us as well, we who seek to follow Jesus. Exactly what do we mean when we call ourselves Christian? How can we dare identify ourselves as members of this family of faith? Who do you say I am, Jesus asks. Our most honest answer to that question is our care for one another, our commitment to what is right and just, are taking the first steps toward reconciliation and forgiveness. When we hear this morning's gospel about Peter the Rock, the keys of the kingdom of heaven and the power to bind and loosen, we immediately think of the church, capital C. We immediately think of the Pope, the sacrament of reconciliation, ecclesiastical authority. I suppose this morning's gospel is about that to some extent. But this morning's gospel, like every gospel, is addressed to you and me. Christ calls every one of us to be the rock of his church, that our own simple, ordinary works of compassion and justice and mercy are the very foundation of Christ's church. Christ entrusts to each one of us the keys to heaven. Through the faith we live every day of our lives, we unlock the presence of God 
in this time and place of ours. Jesus gives us the power to bind, to embrace and love those in need of our compassion and support, especially in these difficult times, and to call to accountability those who are bound to work for the community good. And Jesus gives us all the power to loosen, to untie the knot of anxiety and fear experienced by so many, to shake off whatever tension or bitterness lies between us and another, to lift the burden of those weighed down by fear and brokenness. That's a lot of power and quite a responsibility. But when we unlock the doors and tear down barriers, when we bind in love and we loosen our burdens of others, Jesus promises that heaven stands behind us. Rabbi Harold Kirshner tells the story of a husband who every day for years visited his wife in a nursing home. She suffered from Alzheimer's disease, and each day she lived she slipped further and further into the fog of dementia. But every day he would go and feed her lunch. Every day he would patiently remind her who he was and explained again that they were married and had been married for 52 years and that they had two daughters and a son and four beautiful grandchildren. Every day he would sit with her and show her pictures of their children, telling her the latest family news and stories that she would forget as soon as she heard it. Every day, he would hold her hand as she drifted off into unconsciousness. And every day before leaving, he would kiss her and he would tell her that he loves her. And she would never remember later that he had even been there. His heartbroken friends would ask him, why do you keep going? She doesn't even remember you. She doesn't even know who you are. And he would reply, I go because I know who I am. And we know who we are. We are the rock, and on us Jesus has built his church. We possess the keys to open up God's heaven of justice and mercy right here. We have the power to bind by love and loosen by forgiveness. No, we're not Mother Teresa, or Francis of Assisi, or Elizabeth Ann Seton, or Pope Francis. We are who we are, and God calls us as we are, where we are. So let us go forth in Jesus' name and find our own Calcutta. Together we profess our faith. I believe in one God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all things visible and invisible. I believe in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only begotten Son of God, born of the Father before all ages, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten, not made, consubstantial with the Father. Through him all things were made. For us men and for our salvation, he came down from heaven. By the Holy Spirit, was incarnate of the Virgin Mary and became man. For our sake, he was crucified and upon his pilot. He suffered death and was buried and rose again on the third day in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead and his kingdom will have no end. I believe in the Holy Spirit the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son is adored and glorified, who has spoken through the prophets. I believe in one holy Catholic and apostolic church. 
I confess one baptism for the forgiveness of sins, I look forward to the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. Relying on God's unfailing promise, we pray for the church and for our world. That church leaders and faithful believers practice charity and patience with one another, we pray to the Lord. That temporal rulers and civil leaders resist temptation and root out corruption, we pray to the Lord. That those who know the gift of friendship and marriage remain constant in love through every trial, we pray to the Lord. That this community be healed of every division, we pray to the Lord. For Christian families, the source of religious vocations, that they may be prompted to encourage young people to rejoice in doing God's will, we pray to the Lord. For all petitions brought to our shrine seeking the intercession of St. Jude, we pray to the Lord. For all of the sick, especially those whose names are listed in our parish bulletin, that God will heal them and restore them to good health, we pray to the Lord. And for what else shall we pray? For these intentions and for Madeleine Chantelois, we pray to the Lord. Eternal God, our power is yours to grant. Hear the prayers of your servants and grant what we ask through Christ our Lord. Amen. Pray, brothers and sisters, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. And Lord, accept the sacrifice at your hands, for the praise and the glory of his name, for our good and the good of all of us. O Lord, who gained for yourself a people by adoption, through the one sacrifice offered once for all, bestow on us, we pray, the gifts of unity and peace in your church, through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Lift up your hearts. We lift them up to the Lord. Let's give thanks to the Lord, our God. It is right and just. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation. Always and everywhere to give you thanks, Lord, Holy Father, Almighty and Eternal God. For we know it belongs to your boundless glory that you came to the aid of mortal beings with your divinity, even fashion for us 
a remedy out of mortality itself. That the cause of our downfall might become the means of our salvation through Christ, who is our Lord. Through him, the host of angels adores your majesty and rejoices in your presence forever. May our voices, we pray, join with theirs in one chorus of exultant praise as we acclaim, Holy, holy, holy Lord, God of hosts, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. You are indeed holy, O Lord, the fount of all holiness. Make holy, therefore, these gifts, we pray, by sending down your Spirit upon them like the dewfall, so that they may become for us the body and blood of our Lord, Jesus Christ. At the time he was betrayed and entered willingly into his passion, he took bread, giving thanks, broke it, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice and was more giving thanks, gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith. We proclaim your death, O Lord, and profess your resurrection until you come again. Therefore, as we celebrate the memorial of his death and resurrection, we offer you, Lord, the bread of life and the chalice of salvation, giving thanks that you've held us worthy to be in your presence and minister to you. Humbly we pray that partaking of the body and blood of Christ, we may be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit. Remember, Lord, your church spread throughout the world and bring her to the fullness of charity together with Francis, our Pope, Peter, our Bishop, in all the clergy. Remember also our brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection, and all who have died in your mercy. Welcome them into the light of your face. Have mercy on us all, we pray, of the Blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, Saint Joseph, her most chaste spouse, with the blessed apostles and all the saints who have pleased you throughout the ages we may merit to be co-heirs to eternal life and praise and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him and with him and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. Amen. At the Savior's command, and formed by divine teaching, we dare to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Grant peace in our days and by the help of your mercy. We may be always free from sin and safe from all distress as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours now and forever. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. And also your spirit. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world, and have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world, have mercy on us. 
Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Grant us peace. Behold the Lamb of God. Behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word, and my soul shall be healed. Let us pray. Complete within us, O Lord, we pray, the healing work of your mercy, and perfect and sustain us so that in all things we may please you, through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. The mighty God bless us all, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Go in the peace of Christ. Thanks be to God. <laughs>